Good morning, students. <clears throat> so you've been learning a lot about DNA and how it works. And I wanted to teach you today about what that has to do with how your DNA gets passed on and why that's important. So we're going to start with genetics. Back in 1822, a monk named Gregor Mendel was born. And he lived in a monastery, uh, did a lot of experiments with agriculture, growing plants. And when I talk about growing plants, I mean, he grew them by the hundreds, if not by the thousands. So he had lots of numbers, lots of data to collect. And he became really famous because he was growing pea plants. So let's take a look at what a pea plant looks like. This is the flower. And after the flower has been fertilized, the peas grow right here in a pea pod. Pea plants have 14 chromosomes. Uh, remember, we have 46 chromosomes. Okay, you got 23 from your mom, 23 from your dad. So pea plants have 14. They get seven from the male and seven from the female. Believe it or not, there are male and female parts on the pea plants. This is what a flower looks like on a pea plant. And let's take a look at how uh, DNA gets passed on here. This is the male part of the flower the anther, and this is the female part of the flower, the ovary. Sound familiar? So sex cells are made here. That's pollen, the male reproductive sex cell. And those pollen cells, they sometimes get carried off by bees or the wind blows them, whatever it happens to be. But if they land here on the stigma of the flower, it could be the same flower, it could be a different flower, another pea plant, that pollen will move all the way down to the ovary, find an egg cell, an ovule, and it fuses together to form a seed. So you would have seven chromosomes from the male sex cell and seven chromosomes from the ovule fusing together to form a new offspring with 14 chromosomes. Now Mendel, he kind of understood how the plants reproduced. He didn't know about DNA. But he knew that if he kind of took a little paintbrush and, and dusted off some of the anthers, he could pick up some of that pollen and put it here. And then eventually that pollen would move down and form new plants. So he could make these reproduce the way that he wanted to. He could cross whatever pea plant he wanted with another one. There's a video that you can watch. And if you want, you can go ahead and pause my video and go watch uh, the video that I've set up for you called pollination. Okay, so if you watched it, great. If not, and you're back, let's take a look at some of the characteristics that pea plants have. There's round versus wrinkled seeds. There's yellow peas versus green peas. You're probably most familiar with the greens. There are purple flowers and white flowers, inflated pods or constricted, kind of bumpy looking pods. There's yellow pea pods, there's green uh, pea pods. There's tall pea plants and there's short pea plants. Okay. So this just gives you an idea of some of the characteristics that Mendel was looking at. And he kind of paid attention to characteristics in the pea plants that had what we call two forms, either yellow seeds or green, purple flowers or white. It just made it easy for him to take a look at the characteristics in the plants once they reproduced. Okay. So in my next video, we're going to talk about the first experiment and learn how Mendel was able to cross pea plants and what he came up with.